Welcome everybody to another lecture. Today's unit is Participate in Safe Work Practices and the unit code is SITX WHS001. We'll be going through all of the lecture slides today and we will be pausing in between for the activities that are involved so feel free to come back and revisit any section that you may be having trouble with or you are confused about and yeah let's get started 1.1 follow organizational health and safety procedures 1.2 incorporate safety work practices into own workplace activities so OHNS and WHS for most of Australia OHNS uh, legislation was superseded by WHS legislation in 2012 so in this case um, if you're in New South Wales like we are we uh, address it as WHS but for people who are still in Victoria and Western Australia they still address this as OHS in the old one so they haven't changed to WHS well, uh, health and safety procedures, workplace hazards and associated health and safety and security risks. So, um, you know, this could be to you, workplace um, personnel or to customers. Uh, contents of health and safety and security procedures. So this could be in your policies and procedures in the workplace. Uh, format and use and templates uh, reports for hazards and incidents and accident reporting. So your workplace will have uh, their own documentation. If not, you can find these on the uh, the government websites which are related to your industry. So for us in New South Wales, um, you know, we're looking at uh, if our business doesn't have any templates, we'll be going, going to the Food Authority website and then downloading the templates that they provide for free and just using that which is more than enough for us to abide by the laws that are required from us but if we want to use our templates and logos and things like that we can we can change it we are free to do so as long as the required information is there okay safe work practices for individual job roles and procedures for WHS management practices and we'll also be you know you need to know what the signs are accordingly to your workplace and how they run so evacuation of staff and customers, so we think about safe exits and restrictions. Assembly points, identifying um, those trained to respond to an emergency situation and taking instructions from them. How and when to notify emergency services. How to effectively coordinate any emergency response. Use of emergency items such as a fire extinguisher or fire blanket. In our case such as um, you know, chefs and cooks most likely will be using fire blankets or sprinklers if it's a fire for, you know, causing heavy amounts of smoke. If it's a oil fire, we'd be using the blanket. We wouldn't be using water as it would splatter everywhere and create more smoke. <coughs> if it's an electronic fire, we'd be using the CO2 extinguisher. So security management can apply to cash, documents, equipment, keys, and people, storage, anything like that, that hold any value. WHS management procedures such as for the roles and responsibilities, general WHS information, risk management, emergency and incident response, induction training, and site safety procedures. Incorporating safe work practices, um, you need to think about the code of practice, uh, having proper PPE, so protective equipment, personal security, following written instructions for work tasks, comply with all WHS regulations and legislations, following safety directions, considering WHS uh, when planning for projects or functions or anything like that. So activity 1A, which health and safety procedures within your own work organization are you required um, to follow in your job role? So as cooks or chefs, we need to be wearing PPE, which are chef jackets, uh, chef hats, aprons, uh, chef pants, and our safety boots, which much must be steel capped boots. So this is a requirement by our organization in the restaurant, and it is also a requirement in general if you're working in any commercial food production premises. Okay. 
So demonstrate compliance with at least one procedure that you have identified in the previous question. So <clears throat> if we were talking about um, us being a chef, we would need to show that we are wearing all the protective gear that we've been provided. So you've, as a student of the cookery, commercial cookery component, you've been provided with uniform by the college. So you would need to use that to show that you are abiding by those procedures and policies of the business. Okay, so write that down and then we can um, move forward on to the next one. So when you're ready, come back, unpause the video and we will move on to the next one. So 1.3, follow safe, uh, safety directions of supervisors, managers and workplace safety warning signs. So safety directions may include verbal instructions from supervisors or managers, WHS regulations and procedures, workplace safety warnings, signs. So things such as these signs are very important um, as they might be in place or in your place. So every industry has a, a different set of signage requirements. As you know, in the kitchen we might not be required to have a forklift or we might not be required to lift um, heavy objects regularly but we might be required to wash our hands or um, dispose of rubbish correctly into the designated bins, things like that. So avoiding complacency, so complacency means essentially getting used to a job and then forgetting important aspects where uh, you know there are little roles and then we get little complacent meaning we get a little easy going and then forget about that important little step that could cause big harm okay so following WHS procedures every time you complete a work task is very important so it's very important to have a list of things so instead of thinking about and remembering things we can follow a list of procedures that we can follow at the workplace and then tick them off as we go and then we won't miss anything. Wearing personal protective equipment is very important also so we can protect ourselves and not cause any harm to us. We also need to always minimize risk whenever it is possible so if we see any wet floors put a sign there. If we see a malfunctioning equipment um, remove that equipment from use and tell everybody don't use the blender as it's not working properly and following verbal instructions even if you don't agree so if you have a manager telling you don't do this uh, and you feel like they've told you the wrong thing there must be a reason why they've told you to not do it so uh, if you if you think it's the wrong thing go to somebody higher and have a discussion with them but don't do what they um, told you not to do okay all right so activity 1b why is it important to comply with safety directions in your workplace First of all, we want to keep everybody safe, so customers, work, um, you know, work colleagues and ourselves. So whenever we've been given directions, we want to follow them. If we, um, you know, do not follow, we could cause great harm or even death. So we want to avoid that as much as possible and keep a safe working environment. For number two, what are some steps you can take to ensure that you don't become uh, complacent with, our, uh, with safety directions. So in our workplace we have lists for everybody so that's one of the techniques that we use is give written lists that, so they can tick off procedures as they go along so they don't have to remember it. Also it's responsibility for others it's not just for yourself so we always make sure to connect the responsibilities to everybody and not just to one so it's everybody's responsibility to maintain a safe working environment. Um, another thing you could do is do regular training for all staff involved so that you can be compliant and don't get tired and be complacent for things that come up in the workplace. Okay. Uh, we can also take initiative and uh, whenever we see opportunities to eliminate risks we take those opportunities and maybe mop up some water from the floor or uh, put a signage where there's wet um, you know patch of floor or tell somebody that an equipment isn't working okay so complete those um, once you're done with that come back and we can move on to the next one 1.4 use 
personal protective equipment and clothing or designated uniforms. So this is very much about personal protective equipment. So eye protection, very important, such as Google's face shields, uh, goggles, sorry. And then we got respiratory protection, so face masks. Right now, everybody's using face masks, gloves to protect themselves from not inhaling any viruses. And there's safety footwear, so you've got, you know, steel cap boots. I'm always talking about steel cap boots because if you lose a foot, if a, a, you know, if a knife gets in there, you're losing a toe, I can't give you your toe back or I can't give you your foot back. So, <clears throat> yeah, maybe insurance can pay you some money, but that's not going to give you your foot back. So, better to be safe than sorry. Wear proper equipment. Okay, body protection. We've got aprons, gloves. Um, you know, you could have... Um, raincoats or hazmat suits to cover you from any chemical splash. Then we've got head protection, you know, such as hats, helmets, and other things that you could be using. We could also be using beard nets to hold our hair or any uh, hair bands, things like that. Okay, designated clothing or uniform. So we want have our uniform to be fit for purpose, have the adequate um, pockets be made from the right material and be protective should be helpful in protecting trip slips and falls so it should be non slip uh, should be slip resistant and consistent with the organization's brand and image so uh, as you've seen before when we in induct you we give you a uniform and um, you've got the branded uniform there with our college brand so we know where you're from who you are so activity 1C, what is your usual work uniform? Does it include any personal protective equipment? When is it used if so? Okay, so we are chefs, so we have uniforms. Our uniforms will include chef's hat, uh, a chef jacket, a, a comfortable pants which are not tight or which are not ripped. Um, then we've got an apron and also the steel cap boots. So all of these will need to have the proper uh, pocketing, need to be made out of the proper material that could be fire resistant so that we can protect ourselves. We wear it at all points where we are in a commercial food premises. So this could be our own workplace or visiting another workplace where we are conducting work. Um, and as we are producing food we need to try and keep the contaminants away so if we have beards or long hair tie it up put it in our hats if we have jewelry to take the jewelry off things like that okay so include that and include any other things or aspects that you might want to include in that question come back and we'll move on to the next one 1.5 promptly report unsafe work practices issues and breaches of health, safety and security procedures. So unsafe work practices such as an employee ignoring WHS requirements, issues and breaches of health procedures such as an injury occurring in the workplace, issues and breaches of security procedures such as a non-authorized person entering a restricted area or gaining access to confidential information. You should also be aware of how to submit reports, when to submit reports, to whom to submit those reports and what must be included in them. So what is the correct reporting procedure for unsafe work practices, issues and health breaches, safety and security procedures in your work organization? So if we're talking about Ekush restaurant in this case, for us if it's a unsafe work practice, we would first get in touch with the person conducting um, or doing the procedure incorrectly and we would tell them look this is not how you do the task once we have let them know we would tell them look I'm going to let my manager or supervisor know that this is the issue um, just so because I'm concerned with how this is happening and you would email your manager or let them know but it's best to email as you've got a report uh, record of what you know you've submitted so you can protect yourself and others essentially in the case of health breaches, you'd be conducting a report on contamination or if there are any issues with food or if people have fallen sick. And then you would complete those um, records and submit them to your manager and take appropriate action as required. 
So this could be disposing of food, providing first aid, anything like that. In case of safety and security in your organization, first of all, we use encrypted um, passwords to log into our online systems in our restaurant. But if this fails and if there are people that are hacking in, we would report them to the proper authorities, such as Triple O would call the police. If there are personnel that are trying to fight us or if they're trying to rob us, we would try and get them on the camera and try and get a picture or video of their face, but we would, would not try to fight them or try to stop them from robbing us. We would provide them with whatever they would like and let them go and then provide the evidence to Triple O and let them solve this problem as we are not going to harm ourselves for a couple hundred dollars. Even a thousand dollars is not worth losing your life over. Okay, so including the ideas that you may have and then we can move forward to the next one. 1.6. Identify and remove hazards from immediate workplace area and report all workplace hazards as they arise. So when we're identifying hazards in the workplace, we might be doing visual inspections, risk assessments, using checklists, uh, involving employees and taking their feedback and any injury registers or forms that we might have. Uh, remove hazards, so we want to seek assistance where necessary, for example, if an object is too heavy or to lift, but I would always advise to seek assistance in any case. There's no harm in seeking for help. We also want to wear personal protective equipment where required, so such as wearing gloves, um, you know, uh, shoes, non-slip shoes, steel cap sh boots, aprons, whatever it might be. And also follow WHS policy and procedures. Reporting hazards. Hazards should be reported according to organizational reporting procedures. This may be in a written or verbal form, depending on the nature of the hazard and its urgency. Okay, so complete a risk assessment, visual inspection, checklist and uh, in the workplace verbally report your findings to your assessor attach any tools into your work okay so what we'd want to do here is essentially we walk through the venue we would identify things such as um, malfunctioning equipment spills on the floor we would be identifying things so this you would first need to identify who your supervisor is so in this case will be your trainer so you'd first want to write down, I have um, gone through and done a visual inspection of the restaurant kitchen and the dining area and have reported back to Jahid, these are my findings and then talk about the findings. So this could be various things such as oil spills, um, continuously malfunctioning equipment, rodent uh, present or contaminated food. This could be also um, you know, things such as damaged products. This could be putting heavy items on higher shelves, which could cause uh, potential harm to people. Uh, improper use of equipment, improper, uh, po you know, uh, work practices are being done, hiring unskilled people, hiring people that are untrustworthy or have a, um, or have you know not enough knowledge on the work task and you have let your supervisor know that they need to be trained so things like that that you need to identify and then once you have done you could email this these findings off to your trainer or you can write them in the workbook which I would prefer you to do okay all right so complete that and then we can move on to the next one so when you're done come back unpause the video and we can move on 2.1 recognize emergency and potential emergency situations so emergency situations could be medical emergencies fires natural disasters confrontations any violent situations such as armed robbery or other acts of violence could be fighting could be you know people threatening violence things like that Medical emergencies, so uh, we could be observing them if they have breathing problems, chest pain if they're choking, fainting or loss of consciousness, sudden injury due to the fall or, um, you know, anything that have, might have happened. They might be laying on the ground and it seems like they're doing something that they don't usually do. Uh, 
a change in mental status and health. This could be that they, you know, have gotten a bad review and now they're angry, so they're not really handling themselves correctly. Contact with a hazardous substance, showing symptoms of urgent medical issues such as heart attack or stroke. Activity 2A. What kind of events may be considered emergency situations in the context of your work environment? So in my work environment, um, we're thinking of, okay, people have hurt themselves, right? So could be stab wounds, could be cuts, could be burns, um, could be smoke inhalation. What else could be, um, you know, angry customers. Um, customers, you know, not happy with the quality of food, want to create a situation of violence. Maybe they, there are people who want to rob us, things like that, and want to get violent. Okay. What may be some signs that a person is experiencing a medical emergency? So they could be choking, they could be clutching at the chest and having chest pain. Um, they could be doing things that are not normal, maybe acting weirdly and uh, behaving in a manner that is not like them and usually that they don't um, do normally. Maybe they're laying on the floor and they've been there for too long. Uh, maybe they are moving in an awkward way such as spasming or having a seizure, Okay, things like that. Are there any guidelines in your organization's policy and procedure for recognizing emergencies and potential emergency situations? So there are many guidelines. Uh, we could talk about so many, but I'll give you a few that we use for Equus restaurants. So in case of an emergency where we are being robbed, we train the staff to get um, as close as possible to a camera so wherever the surveillance cameras are positioned and try and get an image or some sort of um, you know evidence of the person that's trying to rob us and we would not fight them on the whatever they're trying to steal from us we would give it to them and then let them go once they have left the premises we would contact triple o the emergency services call police and then hand over evidence to them, let our managers know or our owners know that we've been robbed and then let the police handle that situation. Okay. Uh, there are other things such as, you know, burns where if you've got a person that's been cut or burnt, we would have a first aid supervisor in the uh, venue who is, you know, supervisor or manager or whatever, they'd be trained in that and they'd be conducting the first aid procedures to that person that's been harmed. All right, so when you're ready, complete those and come back and I'll pause the video so we can move on to the next one. So complete that and come back. 2.2, follow organizational security and emergency procedures. Organizational procedure, organizational procedure may outline evacuation procedures, providing medical aid, contacting emergency services, ensuring us uh, safety of self and others, escape routes. So, uh, what are organizational policy and procedure for responding to each of the following? So, if it's a medical emergency, we would first of all get in touch with our first aid of, um, officer in the workplace. So, if it's uh, in Equish, we would have a supervisor who would be trained in first aid procedures and how to handle any medical emergencies but we would ultimately call triple O if it's something serious and get them to come to the premises and while they are getting to us we'd be providing the first aid um, once they get to our restaurant we would um, brief them on all of the details and goings on that has happened to this point and give them as much detail as possible so they can do their job to the best of their ability. In case of fire, we would first have the supervisor who has been elected to be the leader in these situations. They would escort everybody such as, um, as the colleagues and the customers or any other people that might be present out of the venue first to a muster point or a meeting point. Once um, they have collected and taken a head count of everybody 
they would then ultimately uh, call the emergency services or try and stop the fire if possible. If the fire is not possible uh, to solve, they would make sure everybody's safe and let the emergency services do their thing. Uh, robbery, in case of robbery, like I said before, we would not try and fight them. We would try and take evidence such as in a video camera. We would try and get to that location where we are being recorded. We would then let them steal or take whatever they want, such as money or equipment. And once they have left the premises and we are sure that they have left, call triple O, call our bosses and supervisors and managers and all those things and let them know that we've been robbed. Once the police gets to us, we would provide them with the evidence and let them do their job and hopefully they can recover the items stolen or money that they've stolen. 2.3. Seek assistance from colleagues or authorities during emergency situations. So, seeking assistance. Assistance may be sought from nearby colleagues who are unable to contact others. So, yeah, if you're not able to get in touch with emergency services, very important you get in touch with colleagues around you. But, in my personal experience, always ask for help. If you, if you know there's a situation and it's going bad, get help as soon as possible so pe more people can help in this situation um, yeah if you're by yourself there's more things that you need to do so it helps to have a lot more people so you can section out the tasks and individualize what they have to do so you can solve the problem a lot quicker yeah then you've got your first aid officer who might most likely be your supervisor or manager you've got the fire warden any supervisors and emergency services obviously triple O will let you know um, what the best service will be so in case of fire will be the fire brigade in case of um, theft or violence or any disputes will be the police in case of any emergency medical situations will be the paramedics <coughs> so contacting assistance obviously by phone uh, Tano system and then you've got panic buttons, uh, so most venues where there's only one person, such as a 7-Eleven or a petrol station will have panic buttons, maybe a bank will have panic buttons. This essentially is a more higher risk venue as there is nobody around them. So these buttons are hidden away somewhere so they don't alarm the person robbing or harming that person. Um, this notifies the business owner, the managers that are responsible and straight away it will let the police know or um, a specified personnel that is connected to that button know that there is an issue and they need to respond to that place as soon as possible. If there are private security guards on hold you can also um, get in touch with them as well. So activity 2C uh, from whom may you seek assistance during an emergency situation? So, like I've notified and told you guys before, um, you know, your nearby colleagues, per state officer, fire warden, supervisors, emergency services, such as fire brigades, paramedics, and police. But I say uh, seek assistance from everybody around you. Anybody that is willing to help will, you know, be essential in situations of emergency. Right, 2.4. Complete emergency incident reports accurately following organizational procedures. So this is a minor injury record, so you put dates, the names of the people, the injury that was faced, the body part where it is located, and the treatment that you have provided, such as an ice pack or antiseptic, whatever it might be. So first aid information form um, will include details of the injured person, incident details, first aid administered, um, and details of the first aid officer. Incident notification form will have the event type, incident outcome, incident details, the injured persons and the details of them, the employment details of the worker involved, injury details, employer details, uh, the notified details which is you, whoever is notifying or doing the form, and the signature of the relevant person, so everybody involved. So complete all right, so activity 2D, so we've got three templates in there in your workbook that you need to complete. So the minor injury record is pretty simple. So what you want to do is essentially pick out 
three employees at your workplace um, on three different occasions let's say um, yeah you would put the dates that is names what sort of injury maybe a sprain maybe a burn maybe a cut and then what body part they were injured in and what sort of treatment you gave them maybe a bandage maybe you gave them some uh, hot water packs or cold packs whatever it might be okay so first aid information form here you'd want to include your name your age your gender the oh sorry the person's gender the work area that they're from where they're working so it could be kitchen dining area whatever the uh, if they're a worker or visitor so most likely if they're a worker they're a worker if they're a visitor or customer they'd be a visitor pre-existing medical conditions so if they're diabetic low cholesterol disabled whatever um, so incident details so it could be type of injury could be sprained ankle or cut wrist whatever it might be or uh, dismembered finger whatever how the injury occurred so if we're talking about dismembered finger the worker has chopped his finger on the meat slicer the time and date obviously when and where it happened and the witnesses so how, how many people witnessed it who witnessed it and then the first aid uh, administered so what was done called triple O was called finger was frozen in an ice pack and then given to the paramedics um, and bandaged up hand to stop the bleeding as much as possible and the details of the first aid officer who provided the first aid now for the incident notification form we're looking at event type incident outcome so event type might be fire might be um, theft robbery whatever incident outcome would be loss of cash till loss of equipment whatever um, could be um, ice cream machine could be two thousand dollars incident details so any details that you could provide such as okay tall black man or person fell off the um, the ladder into <coughs> the hot water pot which fell into the boiling um, or the hot oil which created a big um, splatter of oil and a oil fire uh, injured persons you put down whoever was injured the employment details of that worker if they're employed or not with us what sort of injury then they've had in the injury details so burns or cuts whatever employer details so this would be the details of the business notifier details this would be your details so who you are where you work um, what your expertise are or how to get in touch with you and then the names of relevant people, their signatures, so people that are involved, and then the date that it was done. Okay, so complete those. When you're done with that, come back and we'll move on to the next one. 3.1. Participate in WHS management practices developed by the organization to ensure a safe workplace. WHS management practices may relate to identifying hazards, assessing risk, controlling risk, reviewing control measures, and keeping records. Identifying hazards and assessing risk. This part of WHS management in may involve risk assessments, analyzing feedback from employees, reviewing injury registers or safety inspections done regularly, and you may use uh, or you know, you may have the aid of a checklist to do so. Controlling risks. This may be involved in implementing WHS procedures such as those relating to safe work practices, um, best workspaces, and handling dangerous materials or equipment. So we need to be wearing PPE in this case, right? So personal protective equipment. Reviewing control measures. Discussion with or formal report to WHS representatives regarding a WHS matter. Discussion with supervisor or manager regarding a WHS matter or staff meeting involving WHS discussions. So when we're discussing a formal report, you know, this would be in a formal setting in a private area where everybody can talk about what is happening and what sort of things we should be doing to improve these factors. 
and when we're discussing with a supervisor or a manager we might be doing an informal setting we might be just having a chat um, or we could be doing it in a formal setting where we are doing a you know a documented meeting and you know these are all processes that we have um, in place or what we need to have in place keeping records so we're keeping injury registers um, injury records first aid reports incident reports safety inspection reports and risk assessment outcomes so WHS practices exist in your organization for each of the following areas all right, so identify hazards and assessing risk. So if we're talking about um, a chef, a head chef, so for us in the Equish restaurant, our head chef will come in, and then first of all, he'll be assessing the dining room, he'll be assessing the storage areas and the uh, preparation areas in the kitchen, and he'll be going through the cleanliness, the uh, if there's any damaged or contaminated foods, he'll be going through the equipment, and making sure that they're all up to the you know the standards that we require he would then identify any risks such as water spilt or malfunctioning equipment that need to be purchased or maintained he would put in a purchase order or he would um, then put in the controlling uh, factors so he could be mopping up those spills or <coughs> he could put a signage there to say oil spill, can, do not use this equipment or remove the malfunctioning equipment. Then he'll be going through the control measures and see how effective his solutions were and ultimately completing a record of what he has done. Okay, So uh, in sense of keeping a record, the records would be stored in a safe place but needs to be signed off by a manager or owner of the business and made sure that we have all um, done the right thing and taken the steps that are required. 3.2 Actively participate in WHS consultation processes. Consultation with workers must take place when identifying hazards and assessing risks, uh, making decisions about ways to eliminate or minimize those risks, making decisions about adequacy of facilities for the welfare of workers, uh, proposing changes that may affect the health or safety of your workers. Making decisions on health and safety procedures. Duty holders, health and safety representatives and health and safety committees. So the HSI, HSC, uh, the representatives will be a part of the HSC. The representatives can be from many different sections or they most likely will be your managers and supervisors. But if you've got a big company, they'll be the most um, knowledgeable person from that section. So this could be one person from the function area, one person from the dining, one function from the restaurant, one function from the cafe. So if you've got a big venue, you'll have many. The more um, bigger the organization, the more um, people in the committee. So when might WH's consultation take place in your organization? So Initially, when we create a business plan to open up a business, we would consider the WHS um, issues that may arise. So what sort of um, business are we going to do? Okay, we're going to be doing cooking. There's going to be open flame. Okay, we need to do this, 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 this. And we'd sit together with our managers that we hope to employ or um, you know, potential business partners and we'd go through the WHS consultation there. Secondly, we would after creating the business, we would go through a WHS consultation before we let anybody in on how we have um, essentially followed through with our plan to have a zero risk um, workplace. Once we have seen, okay, we have eliminated as much as we could, we couldn't get to a zero risk place, um, but these are the steps that we need to take to do so, and we would then implement those solutions. Once we have hired people, um, have customers, we could do a review on how these customers and colleagues of ours are reacting and, um, you know, to that workplace or the venue. And then we can identify after doing that review, identify what sort of WHS 
issues are being faced and then create a plan to eliminate those and then once those plans are all completed we will need to review them together so we are always doing WHS consultation um, you know if we're changing equipment if we're changing venues if we're getting newer customers we're always seeing what sort of things are changing in our area so if we're upgrading our business that means we also need to upgrade our um, WHS meetings as well number two who is the health and safety representative for your work group so in most cases it will be a manager or somebody that is well known about the industry or the section so for us as cooks or chefs our representative will be the head chef or the uh, manager or the restaurant manager or kitchen manager number three what is health and safety committee and what does it do so the health and safety committee is made up of health and safety representatives so these could be um, you know made up of skilled workers or could be made up most likely is made up of managers or and supervisors in in bigger companies they'll be made up of people who are from the sections and have a deep knowledge of those sections so they could be one person from uh, dining there could be one person from uh, customer service there could be one person from kitchen there could be one person from preparation one person from function hall all that and then Consulting with them all will bring in all the issues from all of those aspects and they can go through all the venues together and go through that. So th what the safety committee does essentially is they go through consultation, they do formal um, walkthroughs and tours of the venue, then do a consultation together to see what sort of risks that they've identified and then go through a rating system for their risk assessment and see what things they need to solve as soon as possible and what things they can hold on for and then they will implement those solutions and then go through a review process to see how effective those reviews were or those solutions were and then if they weren't effective what they can do in the future to make them more effective or eliminate the risk from the equation and make the workplace a zero uh, risk um, workplace all right so complete those uh, questions once you're ready come back and we can move on to the next one 3.3 report WHS issues and concerns as they arise issues res uh, issue resolution procedure so you observe unsafe work practices by a colleague um, whenever you see unsafe work you'd approach the, the colleague and tell them look this is unsafe please don't do this I don't want you to get hurt or others to be hurt. Um, if they don't listen to you, you will need to contact a manager or supervisor and let them know. I would I recommend always emailing them so you have a record <coughs> or you know text or something. Verbal is good, but um, you want a record. You want to protect yourself. Okay. Uh, you become aware of malfunctioning equipment or broken equipment. So in this case, you would first of all. Um, eliminate the equipment from the environment you would take it away or make sure everybody knows that uh, it's not working and malfunctioning maybe put up a sign then notify your manager if you need a maintenance order or a um, purchase order you put those in and get those equipments replaced as soon as possible for personal equipment is damaged or missing so first of all you would want to make sure um, that all your workers have the proper PPE if they don't they cannot work so if they have missing or damaged equipment they need to go home or go and buy another one before they can attend work okay health and safety equipment is broken or missing a fire extinguisher so uh, if they are missing we need to get them replaced we need to order a new one but we cannot conduct work unless we have those health and safety measures in place so if we don't have them in place we need to quarantine the area until we can have them corrected so activity 3c what um, we need to discuss health and safety issues and concerns that might be um, required in the workplace um, okay so first of all you'll need to identify who your supervisor will be so in your case this will be your trainer 
So now we will be identifying issues that we have concerns with in our restaurant. So we'll be looking through the dining and the kitchen. So in the dining you might notice broken chairs or you might notice squeaky uh, tables or you might notice um, dirty areas or water on the floor, oil on the floor. You might notice um, there's malfunctioning cameras or things like that that are not keeping evidence of the cash register area or you might have um, storage areas that are not in the correct temperatures and conditions that are required. You might have damaged products, contaminated food, you might have rodents, um, other things in the kitchen such as you could have spills um, on the floor creating a slip, um, possibility of slips and falls. You could have cuts, uh, you could have sharp equipment, malfunctioning equipment that could kill or da um, hurt people. So there's various things, okay? So list those down, make sure you let um, your supervisor know. So I would recommend you email it, um, you know, but if you have not emailed it, write it in your workbook as evidence and date it and sign it and then submit it to your trainer. Okay, so once you've done that, as this is your last activity, you will need to submit this workbook to your trainer. They will let you know how um, well you've gone and if you need to change or do something else or relearn a section they will advise you accordingly I recommend after you submitted your workbook to go and complete your multiple choice questions which are online in your learning resources and they'll be accessible for you after you complete um, the training process for the unit after you've done that you'll have three assessments in class which is a knowledge um, skill and performance which your trainer will guide you through accordingly so hopefully I will see you on the next one if you have any feedback or any questions don't hesitate to ask me or your trainers my email is admin at wisemaneducation.com.au uh, don't hesitate to get in touch with me I'll guide you to the best of my ability and hopefully I'll see you on the next one